brothers and sisters for people who we know and people who we don't and for God distance is not a barrier amen smile you're in America amen amen praise the Lord uh, last Wednesday uh, we talked about uh, God owns the night and we talked about the power of dreams we talked about having asking God for good dreams we talked about how a very important part of our life we dream we sleep and God wants to own that part of our life amen and I saw some Facebook posts of people saying, sweet dreams, God speak to me, God bless your hearts and all of this stuff. And hopefully uh, you had a great week where your night season was given to Jesus and you had no weird stuff happening in the dream. No weird people coming to you in the dream. And, uh, but Jesus, angels and all the good stuff. Say amen. Amen. And tonight we wanted to bring one topic that's very relevant to us and to our life. It's about your mouth and if you are taking notes you can write this down muzzle your mouth and just something about the mouth we want to talk about a little bit anytime I get up to speak or anytime I meet somebody my accent always betrays my background even if I want to keep back and I don't want to tell nobody about the fact that I'm from Ukraine the moment I get an opportunity to open up my mouth and say anything my accent betrays my identity but Jesus said it the other way. He says, out of the abundance of your heart, mouth speaks. It doesn't only happen with me, it actually happens with you as well. You may not have an accent, but let me tell you something. The moment you open up your mouth, you are actually revealing not just your background. You are revealing your heart condition. You are revealing what you are filled with. Because your mouth reveals your heart. That's what Jesus said. You know, if you wake up in the morning and you have bad breath, as long as you keep your mouth shut, nobody will know you have bad breath. But how many of you know you cannot go on a whole day with your mouth shut? You have to open up your mouth to say hello to your mother, brother, sister. You have to say hello to your wife or to your husband. And the moment you open up your mouth, even if you don't say a word, a bad breath comes out and people can fall under power. Not the Holy Ghost power, the nasty power. Why? Because you cannot hold bad breath for a long time in your heart or in your uh, uh, lungs or in your uh, throat. You, you just can't hold it for a very long time. As the moment you open up your mouth, all of this stuff that you got on inside that you kind of feel it, you have it, it comes out. You cannot hold it back. So the key when you have a bad breath is not to learn how to keep your mouth shut. Is learn how to go to the bathroom and brush your teeth. The key when your heart is wicked, when your heart is sinful, where anytime you open up your mouth and everything that's come out of, comes out of your mouth is sin, is blasphemy, it's filth, it's cursing, it's negativity. It's not to learn to zip your lip. It's to learn how to clean your heart so that you don't have to zip your lip. Where well, you can open your heart up and the only good stuff is going to come out. Why? Because you have a good breath called the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you. We as Christians have the Holy Spirit and He is the breath of God and He lives in us and when we open up our mouth it's supposed to be a good breath of the Holy Spirit. The breath of love, the breath of mercy, the breath of compassion, the breath of power is coming out. Why? Because we are filled with the Holy Spirit and when you are filled with the bad spirit, with the horny spirit, with the filthy spirit, with the dirty spirit, with the negative spirit, the moment you open these lips up it comes out. The way you talk about news, the way you talk about USA, the way you talk about your school, the way you talk about your appearance, the way you talk about your weight, the way you talk about your job, your boss, your manager, your ex, your, your future, everything, it comes out. Why? Because when it's inside, you open your mouth, it will come out. The key is not to learn to zip your lip. The key is to learn to ask God to change your heart. And when it changes your heart, you, don't, you can be free to smile, to talk, because bad smell will not come out. The Holy Spirit will come out. Say amen. You know God doesn't speak English. God doesn't speak Spanish. God doesn't speak Russian. And praise God, God doesn't speak Japan. God doesn't speak Chinese. I mean you saw their letters. God doesn't speak those languages. God speaks faith. God's language is the language of faith. 
in Romans chapter 4 verse 17 In Romans chapter 4 verse 17 it says God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did you know what the scripture is saying this scripture is saying God's primary language is faith God looks at things that do not exist and he calls them as though they do exist it means he looks as a single person you are a single person and it's your time to get married and you say I cannot find a suitable mate for me and God sees you married and God doesn't only sees that he calls that he looks at sickness and he doesn't say sickness he says healing and for us as Christians we may look at that and we say this is weird this is not possible why because God's language is not English God's language is faith God speaks faith. God speaks faith into every situation that we face as people. See, I grew up with learning Ukrainian and when I came to America, I know two languages. I'm bilingual. So knowing Ukrainian makes me with difficulty to learn English. It's 10 years and I still struggle with pronunciation. I still struggle with learning the other language. I live in the United States even though my wife almost all the time speaks Russian I most of the time speak English but English is not easy to learn as a Christian you have to understand you have two languages first is the language you were born with it's the language of this world it's the language of defeat it's the language of doubt it's the language of fear it's the language of nightmares it's the language of accusation condemnation it's the language of complaining it's the language of whining it's the language of cussing it's the language of backbiting it's the language of slander it's the language of gossip that's the language that you and i was born with we, grew, we learned this language in our school the tv helped us to uh, perfect this language our friends helped us to make this language sound more better without an accent we know this language but when you become Christian you start learning a different language you start learning that F word doesn't have to go in front of and after every single word the B bomb doesn't have to go to make a point and other words don't really belong there why because as a Christian you are learning a new language and that language is not Christianese that language is faith that language is not just to be able to put Jesus and the Holy Spirit in front and at the beginning of every sentence no it's the language of faith that means you become a positive person you become a person of life you become a person of victory you become a person of triumph you become a person of righteousness you become a person of a strong spirit not just a person who quotes the bible but a person of faith why because God speaks faith and his people speak faith but just like with another language it's not easy you know we live in Pasco and 75 percent of people in Pasco are Hispanic I don't speak Spanish they're all around me I grew up with in, in when I went to Pasco High I went to people with, with Hispanic people I went to school but I don't speak Spanish and I realized it's possible to be around church people all your life but never learn to live by faith it's possible to be in church have your parents Christians grandma Christian at church my youth pastor is a Christian everybody's speaking faith everybody praying faith everybody watching these crazy videos everybody doing all of these crazy things and at the end of the day you still cannot speak God's language and listen God's language is very simple it's faith in his word it's that everything that comes out of your mouth it has to agree with what came out of his mouth God's language is that everything that comes out of my mouth has to agree with what came out from his mouth. Say amen. We see to muzzle our mouth. We have to speak God's language. As Christians, Martin preached a message a few Sundays ago saying that as Christians we cannot rise above our confession. We will fall or rise to the level of our confession. That means if you today having a good life but you're walking around always saying I'm worthless poor little me in a matter of time you will be worthless and you will be very poor and you'll be very little you it's gonna happen 
because the power the life and death is in the power of the tongue if you walk around today and you are worthless you think you're worthless people think you're worthless you are poor and you're little nothing is happening in your life everything is falling apart but you are walking around we're not talking about talking just gibberish and talking weird stuff we're talking about talking the Lord is my shepherd I shall not lack he shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and his glory I'm not weak warm of the dust I'm a child of most high God a royal blood flows through me when you begin to talk like that into your life something happens within a matter of time your life begins to line up to the level of your confession say amen in numbers 14 if you have your bible in numbers 14 and verse 27 28 actually numbers 14 and verse 28 says the following God says to Israel say to them as I live says the Lord just as you have spoken in my hearing so I will do numbers 14 28 we see 12 people go to the promised land and 10 of those people looked at the promised land and they said we cannot conquer this land and they came back to the Israel and they said there is no way we can conquer this land and the two brave ones Joshua and Caleb said we can conquer this land God is on our side and God comes to Moses and he says Moses just like those 10 people who said they cannot conquer the land have said that they cannot conquer the land I will do so what would happen if God will say that about your words what would happen if you wake up in the morning and say this is going to be a bad day and God says I will make it a bad day what would happen if God said just as you have said it I will do it the problem is that God promised the land to them why God did not say just as I have promised I will do no God says just as you say it I will do which lets us know some of our life is byproduct of what we have spoken about it some of our life is byproduct of what we have spoken about it there was one man in the Bible his name was Zechariah and Zechariah was an uncle of Jesus and he was the father of John the Baptist five words that he spoke to God cost him 40 weeks of silence five words that he spoke to God's angel cost him 40 weeks nine months of silence which lets us know God takes your words very seriously the things we say to God the things we say to us the things we say about us God takes very very seriously say amen and so we see that we have to have our words corrected and write words before God in Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 2 Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 2 says the following you are snared by the words of your mouth you are taken by the words of your mouth Solomon in the wisdom that God has given him says you are snared means you are trapped by the words of your mouth means the words that you say actually can trap your life because they will put a limitation upon your life they will put a chain in your life the words that you speak over your life or over the life of other people can trap your life and some of us we are not trapped just by the enemy we are trapped by our own words and God wants to learn us to set us free by the words that we speak and the words of his mouth say amen our words are very important an average person speaks 24 25 to 30,000 words every single day uh, today eating dinner this is not a prox this is approximate about 25,000 not exactly because I would go crazy trying to go to count 25,000 rices this is about 25,000 of pieces of rice in this bag this is how many words you will speak tomorrow or today in your life 
now God's words God compares to a seed that God throws away and it goes into a soil and then it produces a harvest your life is like the soil and your words are this seed and what happens is every single day when you wake up you go into this bag and you go like this and you just and you sow into your life you sow into your life and then after breakfast you go back and you sow into your life you sow into your life I'm a worthless I will not make it I'm so stupid man that thing I look so ugly today man I'm gaining weight all kinds of words good words bad words and we just keep sowing this is just happening in one day and some of you cannot see this but this is becoming wider and wider I have the permission to do so so don't worry I talked to our janitor she said it's okay and so we're sowing every single day we're sowing these words we still have a lot and girls they do it faster it's, it's like this it's just it's just nowhere they just they just talk about who knows what they just keep talking guys we have a purpose we're talking about something it has to be important and for girls it sometimes it goes just like this this is first day this is first day the next day another bag is open another bag is open another bag is open and we, what we think is this is that this is just a word this is just just a seed it has no it has no effect upon my life my friend do this to your field as a farmer and within a year you're gonna see an effect you will reap what you sow you will reap from the kind of words you sow 25,000 seeds you throw into your destiny every single day don't you think you're gonna reap something out of them you will a Joel Osteen uh, shared a story once he said when he was in high school a one guy in the gym who was actually a very handsome man and who was a great basketball player and people came to him and complimented him and said you know you're such a strong man you're such a great basketball player and this man would always say oh I'm just a I'm just the old gray and fat nobody he would always say that try to you know belittle himself try to not to look as you know good as maybe not to be proud he always would say those words I'm just an old bald fat nobody and Joel Osteen says he met him 25 years later he says he could not recognize him he says he was bald he was nobody he was fat and he looked miserable he says what this guy sowed every single time sprung up and he had to reap that harvest my question is you have to speak anyway none of us can stop speaking we will speak anyway what seeds are we gonna sow into our life because it's not just for you it's for your children guess who's gonna be eating from this field your grandchildren this is you're sowing this not into your girlfriend just into your friends into your mom oh no I'm just spreading words they're just falling falling into the air and disappearing my friend they are seeds falling into your soil that you will be eating off and then you're saying why my life sucks because your mouth sucks because the words that came out from your mouth were not good words and they have to be good words sometimes we curse other people and we think we're cursing them in reality we don't realize we are throwing seeds at our own soil pastor shared a testimony last Sunday and he said there was a woman and we tried to look and locate the testimony we were not able to see it he said there was a woman whom husband left this woman and she decided to get back at him and she couldn't get back at him physically she couldn't get back at him to hire an assassin so what she did is she went to a witch doctor and she went to this witch doctor and she says I have this man and I want you to destroy his life I want you to destroy his life and he says okay he took a padlock he took a lock he took a key he opened the lock and he says to her I want you to speak every bad thing about this man and speak what you want to see to happen to this man and so she opens up her big mouth and she begins to say things like I want him never to succeed I want him never to get married I want everything he touches to crumble I want him to get fired from his job I want him to get kicked out from his rental I want him not to have enough money I want him to go mental she begins to say all of these things out of her frustration and then the witch doctor takes and he locks the podlock and he says as long as you keep the lock and the key apart from each other everything you've spoken about that man will come true so she does that she goes throws away the lock and throws away the key and lives her life happy everything is going well and then she starts hearing rumors 
that everything he, she has said about her husband is slowly coming to pass. Then she heard a rumor her husband went mental. Means he went psychic. He went crazy. He, he's walking around London just doing like crazy. You know some of those like crazy people? Mentally challenged people. So that was her husband. But after that, everything she has said slowly started to come upon her. Everything. She starts losing her job. Things are going bad financially. Everything exactly that she spoke against her husband starts coming back at her. And then she starts going mental. So she runs to the church and says, please now break that lock, break that curse because it's working against me. It's no surprise because the Bible says those you bless will be blessed. That you will be blessed those that you bless and those that we curse actually curse will come upon us. If you throw a ball and this wall, let me tell you where the ball is going to come back to. You. It's going to hit the wall my friend. You can curse your boyfriend, you can curse your past, you can curse your mama and your daddy, you can see all kinds of nasty thing and let me tell you something, it's going to affect their life but after it damages their life it comes back at you. Not at the devil, not at your friend, at your life. When you throw a ball in the wall it's going to come back at you. That's why it's so important as Christians to keep our mouth shut when it comes to cursing and destroying other people's lives because it comes back to us not to them. Somebody say amen muzzle your mouth when we muzzle our mouth God's gonna begin to bring a blessing upon our life there was a man in the Bible whose name was Joseph and Joseph had a twin brother whose name was Esau their father's name was Isaac and in the old times what you could do is that when the father would die he would pass all of his fortune to his to his oldest son and some little portions will be left for other children and so Isaac who had these two children, he is old and he's about to die. He calls up Esau, his oldest son and he says, I want to speak blessing over you. Blessing meant this. He's going to come and lay hands upon his son and say things like, may you be blessed, may you be rich, may you be prosperous, may you always be on the top, not on the bottom, may you always be the head, not the tail, may everybody who curses you be cursed and anybody who blesses you be blessed. That's about the blessing. A very short and condensed just a good faith based words spoken over their children. And so the father says I want to do this for my oldest son Esau. I'm about to die. I want to do this for my son. Jacob heard that and Jacob went and prepared the meal and sneaks into the room. His dad is blind so and a little bit deaf and so Jacob put the clothes of his other brother and he says, hey dad, I am Esau, can you bless me? And dad kind of recognized the voice didn't sound the same but he still let him come and he spoke the words that he was supposed to speak for his other son in ignorance over Jacob. He says, Jacob, he says you're Esau and all the good things may happen to you, may do this and this, may you be rich and prosperous and everything and then when Jacob gets up and leaves, Isaac realizes, wait I've spoken these words in ignorance but he still could not take those words back. He still could not take those words back and let me tell you something, those words went with Jacob for the rest of his life. Those words are still with Jacob till this day. Jacob's name today is Israel. Those words are still with Israel today and we have to understand Jacob, Isaac could have said I did not mean that. That was the wrong son. He cheated me. He lied to me. That did not matter. Once you say a word it doesn't come back. It goes and does his work. If you, if you click the bullet, if you pull the trigger the bullet cannot come back. Once the bullet left, leaves the gun, it's over. You cannot return it back. And same thing is with our words. It's so important. You know, we, in here we are not parents, most of us. But once you become parent, it's so important as a parent to speak life to your children. Because Isaac spoke those words in ignorance. But they still worked for his son. How many parents speak words in anger? And they say they were spoken in anger. Probably that those words don't mean anything. No, those words mean everything. 
just because they were spoken in ignorance or just because you were upset or because you were frustrated or because you were feeling down and lowly that does not mean those words that you speak don't have power and have effect Isaac was completely blind and deaf and couldn't hear properly and his son lied to him but still those words were powerful and they worked for his life my friend the words that you speak when you're frustrated they mean something they have power in that moment do not just discredit them and say those words mean nothing because I was upset I was mad that's what everybody does no those words have power words have power amen in Proverbs and I've quoted the scripture in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 20 it says a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth I'm gonna read this again a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth from the produce of his lips he shall be filled death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit what is Solomon is saying Solomon is saying the words that you and I speak into your life into your future about your life about other people they have power these words are not meaningless, unimportant, small, dead seeds. These words, they will take root in, the, in your life and you will eventually eat of the fruit of your mouth. Your stomach is going to be satisfied or tortured by the fruit of your lips. What you say or don't say will affect your life. A teacher in 1970s was a teacher in college and she was teaching music in college in California. She had a student who came to her class whose name was Edward and Edward was over six feet tall and he looked very skinny but not skinny as that he didn't eat but skinny as just terrifying skinny. He always looked very scary even in his face, always sad and always coming with his head down and he always took the last seat in the classroom never participated in any discussion always turned his homework late and he always performed poorly and the teacher noticed him and always felt compassion for him and tried to start a conversation with this guy named Edward but he didn't respond his answers were not even yes or no but he didn't even talk she would see him during lunch through her window and he would always eat alone eating his sandwich looking in space and minding his own business it seemed like he had no friends until the quarter was coming to an end the music quarter was coming to an end and they had finals and this guy took a final and she knew the teacher knew he's not gonna do good on this final he's gonna probably have C plus or D he's not gonna do good on this final and so she graded his final work she didn't put the grade she looked through it and she saw that this man's final was it was D A B C D it was the before just before F it was the D grade but she did not put that grade on it something told her not to put it in on Tuesday nine o'clock that's when the students supposed to come and pick up their you know grade report and the teacher supposed to wish them well with their life and everything all the students are in line and everybody came and took their grade report and said thank you the teacher said you did this and that work on this and that and Edward didn't show up and so next thing that happens she locks her office and about to walk away and Edward comes in and so she takes him in asks him if he wants some water he says no and then Edward and this is actually exact words of his that I'm going to read to you so this man sits down and he says I know that I'm getting a low grade on my final and my class I realize that I have been participating I have not been participating in this class and I am an embarrassment to others I am lazy I am selfish stupid and ugly no good for anything person I have no place on this earth and what's more no one can ever love a person like me I am hopeless case with absolutely no future and so and this teacher has his exam she did not put the grade on it and she turns to this man named Edward and she says your final grade actually is A. He shocks. He says, for the first time he's actually speaking, he says, it could not be. I did a really poor job. And she says, Edward, you are a D student, but you are an A person. 
and because you are an A person he says this time you will have an A on your exam and so he takes his exam and he actually gives her a hug out of joy he leaves the leaves the classroom and starts walking and so she goes home and she has these thoughts she's like I'm known for my discipline and right now I gave this guy a grade that he did not deserve this is actually not illegal this is not right for a teacher to do at three in the morning this teacher gets a call it's from a priest of a local Catholic church and at three in the morning this priest says is this teacher so and so she says yes this is me she says do you have a student named Edward she says yes I do what's going on she says I want to let you know why I'm calling you she says today in the morning of today the reason why this student came late to receive his great report is that he was busy writing a note to his brother he has an older brother who is very short very smart and very athletic and this Edward is very looks to his older brother as a hero and his older brother always always calls him with names and diminishes him parents are never there and he says Edward always felt low self-esteem felt horrible about himself and so he says today the, the, the straw broke the camel's back and he wrote a note that he put on his pillow that says the following. I am sorry that I could not be the kind of son and brother you wanted me to be. All I ever wanted was to be loved. I am sorry for being unlovable. I will go now. You will find me in the closet. I am sorry for any inconvenience I have caused you. Please have my body cremated my small savings is in the top right hand drawer of the dresser he leaves this note on his bed and he went to you just to pick up his last grade because he knew it's going to be bad and he was supposed to go back and hang himself in the closet he said the problem is that he never came back home because of those words you've spoken to him he went to the park and out of excitement start thinking about them to that degree that he forgot he was supposed to kill himself and he says now he came to church to ask for forgiveness and he wants to start his life again this student came back and he was a student of this teacher next quarter he helped other students and today he's a doctor in California and he has four children and he's helping other kids who are struggling with suicide don't talk to me that words don't have power life and death is in the power of a tongue come on put your hands together for this guy and for his testimony my friend your words are like seeds they have power and maybe nobody in your life has spoken over you and says you're important or you're loved and you're handsome and you can make it I want to tell you something tonight Jesus Christ wants to speak to over your life tonight and he wants to tell you that he loves you and he cares for you and you don't have to take your life because he already gave his life so you can have your life and live it to the fullest for the glory of God and God's word can cleanse you and purify you and every day you can take God's word and sow it into your life and your life to flourish and grow for the glory of God somebody say amen God's words are seeds my friends God wants to realize the power of your words because in the power of his words your life can be changed amen in James chapter 3 with lack of time James said he says that we put a bridle on on horses mouth so with that we can control horses and he says the same way any man who bridles his mouth he says that man is perfect and he can control his whole body and then James goes on to describe in James chapter 3 he says that nobody can tame the tongue means nobody can control our mouth but we can surrender to the Holy Spirit Molly would you come up for a second everybody give it up give up for Molly hold this for a second This is, I just want to read this as she holds this. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone doesn't stumble in word, he's, he, he is perfect person, able to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouth that they may obey us, that we churn the whole body. So Molly, Molly in here, she drives from Prosser and she knows one or two things about horses that I and you don't know. How many horses Molly do you have? Two. 
she has two horses and how many horses are you trying to buy <laughs> another one she said she wants to have as many horses as they had in book of revelation uh, molly you ride horses why is it important first of all what is this it's a bridle it's a bridle what is this bridle supposed to do for the horse? Uh, it's a way to communicate with the horse and to control the horse speeds and whether it's going to go forward or backwards or away from you. What if somebody like me gets on a horse and we don't have a bridle? I'll wave at you as you <laughs> go somewhere else. So um, no control. You'd probably have a very short ride. The Bible says that as a Christian, Holy Spirit is your rider. And this is the Bible that God wants to put into your mouth so the Holy Spirit can guide your life through God's Word in your mouth, through God's Word in your heart, in your life. And that is why it's so important. Whoever controls his mouth is he who controls his life. If you have no control of your mouth, you have no control of your life. And when Holy Spirit has a control of your mouth, he has a control over your life. Say amen. When Holy Spirit has a control of your mouth, He has a control of your life. And you, sometimes we leave a service like this, or hold it just for a second. We leave a service like this, or we leave a message like this, and most of us are like, you know what? I need to watch over my mouth. No, you don't. You need to surrender your mouth to the Holy Spirit. You don't just watch over it, you surrender it to the Holy Spirit. Let's give it up for Molly. She goes back to her seat. And we have a few more things to share but uh, just finished on that. James continued to talk about, he says that your mouth is like a rudder in the horse and then he says your mouth is like fire. And we know with fire you can set small fire, we have it right here, a small fire you can set the whole forest, you know, with this small light, with this match, you can destroy the whole church. With this small fire, you can destroy just with this fire this small fire now none of us doubt that with this fire you can destroy the church do we no the same power has every single word that comes out of your mouth and most of you the moment i load this up everybody you know especially here be careful my friends we have to be more be careful of our words than of fire because this fire can destroy this physical building but the fire that comes out of your mouth will destroy your spiritual life, will destroy your family, will destroy your relationships, will destroy your reputation and can destroy anything. And did you know when Holy Spirit comes upon us, the first thing that He changes is our language, the tongues. Why? Because He knows it's very hard to control this thing and so He wants to take control of it. Why? So He can set the world on fire for Him that's why God used the tongue of, of disciples he used the preaching he used the prophesying he used the praying and the praising and proclamation of disciples to set the world on fire if you want your world to be on fire you let Holy Spirit take control of your tongue and when, you, when your tongue is taken by the Holy Spirit your life can be on fire for God amen put your Bibles away I want you to stand to your feet